Okay. Sure enough, that evening, rain began to fall, and all night long it beat against the south side of the Quimby's house. The next morning, Ramona, in her boots and raincoat, was out long before Howie arrived to walk to school with her. She waded through the wet lawn, and her boots became even shinier when they were wet. She stamped in all the little puddles on the driveway. She stood in the gutter and let muddy water run over the toes of her beautiful new boots. She gathered wet leaves to dam the gutter so she could stand in deeper water. Howie, as she might have expected, was used to his boots and not a bit excited. He did enjoy stamping in puddles, however, and together they stamped and splashed on the way to school. Ramona came to a halt at the intersection, guarded by Henry Huggins in his yellow slicker, rain hat, and brown boots. Look at all that nice mud, she said, pointing to the area that was to be the parking lot for the new market. It was such nice mud rich and brown with puddles and little rivers in the tire tracks left by the construction trucks. It was the best mud, the muddiest mud, the most tempting mud Ramona had ever seen. Best of all, the day was so rainy there were no construction workers around to tell anyone to stay out of the mud. Come on, Howie, said Ramona. I'm going to see how my new boot, how my boots work in the mud. Of course she would get her shiny boots muddy, but then she could have the fun of turning the hose on them that afternoon, or that afternoon after kindergarten. Howie was already following Henry across the street. When Henry executed his sharp about face on the opposite curb, he saw that Ramona had been left behind. You were supposed to cross with me, he told her. Now you have to wait until some more kids come. I don't care, said Ramona happily, and marched off to the muddy mud. Ramona, you come back here, yelled Henry. You're going to get into trouble. Traffic boys aren't supposed to talk on duty, Ramona reminded him, and marched straight into the mud. Surprisingly, her feet started to slide out from under her. She had not realized that mud was so slippery. Managing to regain her balance, she set each boot down slowly and carefully before she pulled her other foot from the sucking mud. She waved happily to Henry, who seemed to be going through some sort of struggle within himself. He op kept opening his mouth as if he wanted to say something, and then closing it again. Ramona also waved at the members of the morning kindergarten, who were watching her through the playground fence. More mud clung to her boots with each step. Look at my elephant feet, she called out. Her boots were becoming heavier and heavier. Henry gave up his struggle. You're going to get stuck, he yelled. No, I'm not, insisted Ramona, and she discovered she was unable to raise her right boot. She tried to raise her left boot, but it was stuck fast. She grasped the top of one of her boots with both hands and tried to lift her foot, but she could not budge it. She tried to lift the other foot, but she could not budge it either. Henry was right. Miss Binney was not going to like what had happened, but Ramona was stuck. I told you so, yelled Henry against the traffic rules. Ramona was becoming warmer and warmer inside her raincoat. She pulled and lifted. She could raise her feet one at a time inside her boots, but no matter how she tugged and yanked with her hands, she could not lift her precious boots from the mud. Ramona grew warmer and warmer. She could never get out of this mud. Kindergarten would start without her, and she would be left all alone in the mud. Miss Binney would not like her being out here in the mud when she was supposed to be inside, singing the Donzer song and doing seat work. Ramona's chin began to quiver. Look at Ramona! Look at Ramona! shrieked the kindergarten as Miss Binney, in a raincoat with a plastic hood over her hair, appeared on the playground. Oh, dear! Ramona heard Miss Binney say. Drivers of cars paused to stare and smile as tears mingled with the rain on Ramona's cheeks. Miss Binney came splashing across the street. My goodness, Ramona, how are we going to get you out? 
I d don't know," sobbed Ramona. Miss Binny could not get stuck in the mud too. The morning kindergarten needed her. A man called out from a car, "What you need is a few boards. Boards would only sink into the muck," said a passerby on the sidewalk. The first bell rang. Ramona sobbed harder. Now Miss Binny would have to go into school and leave her out here, all alone in the mud and the rain and the cold. By now, some of the older boys and girls were staring at her from the windows of the big school. Now don't worry, Ramona," said Miss Binny. "We'll get you out somehow." Ramona, who wanted to be helpful, knew what happened when a car was stuck in the mud. "Could you call a t tow t truck?" she asked with a big sniff. She could see herself being yanked out of the mud by a heavy chain hooked on the collar of a raincoat. She found this picture so interesting that her sobs, crying, subsided. Stopped, and she waited hopefully for Miss Binny's answer. The second bell rang. Miss Binny was not looking at Ramona; she was looking thoughtfully at Henry Huggins, who seemed to be staring at something way off in the distance. The traffic sergeant blew his whistle, summoning the traffic boys to return from their posts to school. Boy, Miss Binny called out, "Traffic boy, who me?" Asked Henry, even though he was the only traffic boy stationed at that intersection. That's Henry Huggins," said helpful Ramona. "Henry, come here, please," said Miss Binny. "I'm supposed to go in when the whistle blows," said Henry, as he glanced up at the boys and girls who were watching from the big brick building. "But this is an emergency," Miss Binny pointed out. "You have boots on, and I need your help in getting this little girl out of the mud." I'll explain to the principal. Henry did not seem very enthusiastic as he splashed across the street, and when he came to the mud, he heaved a big sigh before stepping into it. Carefully, he picked his way through the muck and the puddles to Ramona. Now see what you got me into," he said crossly. "I told you to keep out of here." For once, Ramona had nothing to say. Henry was right. I guess I'll have to carry you," he said, and his tone was grudging. "Hang on." He stooped and grasped Ramona around the waist, and she obediently put her arms around the wet collar of his raincoat. Henry was big and strong. Then, to Ramona's horror, she found herself being lifted right out of her beautiful new boots. See them stuck right there in the mud. My boots! She wailed. You're leaving my boots! Henry slipped, slid, and in spite of Ramona's weight, regained his balance. You keep quiet, he ordered. I'm getting you out of here, aren't I? Do you want us both to land in the mud? Ramona hung on and said no more. Henry lurched and skidded through the mud to the sidewalk. Where he set his burden down in front of Miss Binny, yay! Yelled some big boys who had opened a window. Yay, Henry! Henry scowled in their direction. Thank you, Henry," said Miss Binny with real gratitude, as Henry tried to scrape the mud from his boots on the edge of the curb. What do you say, Ramona? My boots," said Ramona. He left my new boots in the. How lonely they looked! Two bright spots of red in all that mud. She could not leave her boots behind. Not when she had waited so long to get them. Somebody might take them, and she would have to go back to shoving her feet into Howie's ugly old boots. Don't worry, Ramona," said Miss Binny. Hmm. Excuse me. Looking anxiously toward the rest of her morning kindergarten, growing wetter by the minute as they watched through the fence. Nobody's going to take your boots on a day like this. We'll get them back when it stops raining and the ground dries off. But they'll fill up with rain without my feet in them," protested Ramona. "The rain will spoil them." Miss Binny was sympathetic but firm. "I know how you feel, but I'm afraid there isn't anything we can do about it." Miss Binny's words were too much for Ramona. 
After all the times she had been forced to wear Howie's ugly old brown boots, she could not leave her beautiful new red boots out in the mud to fill up with rainwater. I want my boots, she howled and began to cry again. Oh, all right, said Henry crossly. I'll get your old boots. Don't start crying again. And heaving another gusty sigh, he waded back out into the empty lot, yanked the boots out of the mud, and waded back to the sidewalk, where he dropped them at Ramona's feet. There, he said, looking at the mud-covered objects with dislike. Ramona expected him to add, I hope you're satisfied, but he did not. He just started across the street. Thank you, Henry, Ramona called after him without being reminded. There was something very special about being rescued by a big, strong traffic boy in a yellow slicker. Miss Binney picked up the muddy boots and said, What beautiful red boots! We'll wash off the mud in the sink, and they'll be as good as new. And now we must hurry back to the kindergarten. Ramona smiled at Miss Binney, who was again, she decided, the nicest, most understanding teacher in the world. Not once had Miss Binney scolded or made any tiresome remarks about why on earth did Ramona have to do such a thing. Not once had Miss Binney said she should know better. Then something on the sidewalk caught Ramona's eye. It was a pink worm that still had some wiggle left in it. She picked it up and wound it around her finger as she looked toward Henry. I'm going to marry you, Henry Huggins, she called out. Even though traffic boys were supposed to stand up straight, Henry seemed to hunch down inside his raincoat as if he were trying to disappear. I've got an engagement ring, and I'm going to marry you, yelled Ramona after Henry as the morning kindergarten laughed and cheered. Yay, Henry, yelled the big boys before their teacher shut the window. As she followed Miss Binney across the street, Ramona heard Davy's joyful shout, Boy, I'm glad it isn't me. I love that chapter. Poor Henry Huggins. Okay, skedaddle over to Seesaw and check out the Chapter 5 activity.